Does all hot bitterness taste the same? I'm brewing two blonde ales, each estimated at 40 IBUs. One uses the low alpha acid hops and the other a much smaller charge of high alpha acid hops. Then I'm presenting both beers to participants to see if they can tell them apart, and I'm sending the beers to White Labs to verify their actual IBU scores. What will the results tell us? Let's find out. This episode is sponsored by Great Fermentations. More on them in a bit. So, we're going to brew a blonde ale. Two blonde ales, in fact, we'll start with this one. I've milled the grains directly into my little basket here. In that goes. Now, what am I using for my recipe here? I'm using foundation malt from Epiphany Craft Malts as the pale malt. Then to that, for a little bit of biscuity character, I've added a pound of Vienna. And then I've added half a pound of caramel 10. A little bit of sweetness to this as well. Now, helping me with this experiment, I have a special guest. My name is Devin Tani. I work at White Labs. I'm the technical education coordinator here at White Labs. So what we're testing here is the fact that we should get to the same IBU whether we use high alpha acid or low alpha acid hops. But of course, if we are using lower alpha acid hops, we're going to need to add more hop pellets into the brew to reach that, which means more vegetal matter. Going into this, would you have expected there to be any difference by hopping with a lot of hops versus just using fewer higher alpha acid hops? I guess it really also depends on what type of hop it is, right? Uh, there's so many new products out there, hot products out there. There's like T90 pellets, T45s, there's hop oils. Um, but uh, like what you're saying is, is um, these alpha acids, they're able to isomerize or change formation during the boil to um, mm. turn into iso alpha acids, which provide the bitterness in beer. Um, but yeah, you, you would think with a higher hop load, a higher tube load, if some of that tube or hop pellets get into your wort, uh, you would you would think that would affect some of the taste in, in that beer. So it was time to introduce the variable. I needed a high and low alpha acid hop. Fortunately, Yefimar Buddy Hops offer two varieties of Cascade. The regular Cascade with a 4.7% alpha acid and the Lupamax variety at 12.5%. Lupamax is a concentrated form of hops packed full of more lupulin per pellet, and I wasn't able to get the same crop year, but I got pretty close. So to each batch, I added a single 60-minute hop addition. Now one batch received 64 grams of the regular Cascade, while the other batch received just 24 grams of the much higher alpha acid Lupamax Cascade. And according to Brewfather, both batches should come out to 40 IBU, which, of course, we'll be testing in the lab. Now, we're going to be fermenting this beer at 70 Fahrenheit, that's 21 Celsius. And for the yeast, I'm going to use California Ale yeast. Now, for White Labs, that's WLP001. But White Labs have sent me a couple of these, which are dry packets of WLP001, which I've never used before. Uh, so this is pretty convenient. And the nice thing about these is that you can keep them in your fridge for a good long time. Uh, it says this one expires September 2025, so it's good for a couple of years, which is fantastic. And the instructions say to just sprinkle this on top of the wort, no need to rehydrate it first. A couple of weeks later, I took gravity readings to see both beers had reached a final gravity of 1.007, at which point I pressure transferred the beers to kegs. Then I canned a few samples and sent them off to White Labs for testing. Before we get to the actual lab results and find out what they say though, a quick word about to then sponsor Great Fermentations. Family owned and operated for more than 25 years, Great Fermentations offer a huge range of brewing supplies and equipment. Great Fermentations are well known for their top notch customer service. Trust me, they're super responsive to questions. Great Fermentations offer the ability to custom build your malt bills in fractional amounts, so you're not forced to order full pound increments when you only need a half or a quarter pound of something. And shipping is free on most orders over $59. Check them out at greatfermentations.com. So Devon, I sent you both of my beers and you tested them. How did you do the lab testing? There's great uh, industry standards, guidelines that uh, are followed, such as ASBC or American Society of Brewing Chemists. So we followed one of those as our method uh, for IBU testing. A quick way to break it down is, I like to say it's almost like oil and vinegar, almost making a vinaigrette. Um, what's pretty much happening is 
uh, we are taking our beer, uh, right, which is mainly water, so it's going to be a polar layer. And then we're also adding um, this other non-polar layer called isooctane. And from that, um, we are proteinating, so we're adding an acid, a hydrochloric acid, to the beer layer to help the solubility of these um, isoalpha acids to move into the non-polar layer. So from that, it's almost like making it, almost like adding mustard to your oil, your vinaigrette, and we're able to shake it up and really, really mix it. And from that, we're able to move all the isoalpha acid compounds into this more clear layer. And from this clear layer, we're able to then look at it on a UV spectra photometer. And then from that, we're able to quantify like a certain level of IBU or bitterness units. So at that point, you're able to tell the IBU count, uh, the actual IBU count that was present in the beer, which of course is probably not going to match up with the IBU account that I my brewing software estimated, because that is just literally an estimation. Now, when we did this before, I was shocked at the IBU number, the actual IBU number that I got, because it was uh, seven and nine for the two samples I sent. And I think I was expecting around 24 IBU in the, uh, in the recipe. So I got to like one third of the IBU I was expecting, which was to me just mind blowing. Now this time we were, we were looking at 40 IBU. That was my expected IBU. Uh, what did we actually get with the two beers? Uh, for the two beers, I believe for the Lupo Max, we got uh, 25 IBU. And then for the lower alpha acid one, we were able to get uh, 21.5 IBU. So still below my expected IBUs, but not completely out of the ballpark this time. So the Lupo Max batch ended up having 3.5 IBU higher than the lower alpha acid hop. Should we take any meaning into that or is that just close enough that we should consider it basically the same? So I believe based off the ASBC like reproducibility and repeatability, um, it falls within the 4.3 to 10% range of like um, variance. So that 3.5 could be very negligible in a sense. Um, so I would say uh, based off sensory, it might not have a difference, but uh, IBUs also don't provide the full picture of how a beer tastes. Indeed, they don't. So on to the sensory testing. And we tested this every which way, starting with a semi-blinded test for Norm and I. All right, so I have Norm here for the semi-blinded test. We both know what the variable is at this point. We do. But can we distinguish it, even knowing that, across five triangle tests? Given the fact that when you had the had it tested, had the IBU tested, and they tested so close together, yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna be really lucky to to get the right to to guess the odd man out. Let's do it. All right. I've made my choice. Okay. Too. Good. Okay. Three, two, one. <gasps> Is the green one the odd one out? We're getting a thumbs up from off camera. Sorry. Score. Okay. okay. Round two. New yeah, round two. Three. Two, one. Got a difference of opinion here. All right. Yeah. So is green the old one out? No. No. <sighs> is blue the old one out? No. <laughs> <laughs> now wait a minute. You didn't. You didn't no. trick us again, did is you? Is red the old one out? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Round three. Round three. I'm I'm less confident after that last round. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Oh. Is red the correct answer? Yeah. Three, two, one. Is it blue? Yeah. There we go. All right, so four. Okay. Statistical significance. For statistical significance. Let's move forward the beer we think is the odd one out. Okay. Three, two, one. I wasn't confident. You seem quite confident. Uh, yeah, that to me, um, it, that one struck me as being very different. Um, but, you know, I could be wrong. Okay, is it red? Oh. Oh. Is it blue? Oh. <laughs> you tried this test, Evan? How, how did you do? Uh, I miserably failed at this test of trying to pick out which one was the uh, odd one out of this triangle test. But you also shared the test with some other folks at White Labs. Tell me about that. Yeah, so uh, we got a lot of our brew team as well as our analytical team, the one that does a lot of the QAQC testing. Um, where you could send in samples and um, we're able to run some of these IBU tests and other uh, plethora tests for you. Um, I believe we tested around like uh, 10 people 
and only one out of 10 got it right. As a final test, I served the beer to 20 blinded participants. Each participant was served one sample of the beer made with high alpha acid Lupamax hops and two samples of the beer made with low alpha acid hops in different colored cups, then asked to identify the unique sample. 11 tasters would have to accurately identify the unique sample in order to reach statistical significance, and just seven did. So every piece of data we've collected indicate that these beers were just not reliably distinguishable. Now, reliably is important here because Norm and I both did think there was a perceptible difference. The beer with the lower alpha acid hops and thus more total hop volume, to us it came across as offering a slightly brighter citrus quality, whereas the Lupavax batch represented a tad duller bitterness right on the finish. But not to the extent that we could reliably pick it out every time. So my takeaway from this is, is twofold. First off, calculated IBU in brewing software and measured IBU in the lab are once again two very different things where I'm getting much lower real IBU scores than the calculated ones would suggest. And secondly, but either way, high alpha acid or low alpha acid when it comes to bittering hops, it didn't make much of a difference in this brew. So that's hop quantity, but what about hop age? Do hops that are several years old lose something over their fresher varieties? Well, we tested exactly that in this video here. 